Okay, hi, I'm here today with uh, Trevor Testweed. Trevor is the CEO of a company called Measured. They're based in Santa Monica, and I'll let Trevor describe what Measured does. Trevor, welcome to My Company Story, and tell us about your company. Thank you for having me, Don. It's great to, to be here. Uh, Measured helps marketers understand uh, media incrementality, so the incremental marginal lift driven by a media tactic. Uh, marketers what, Trevor, buy what media does, across what does Facebook. That? Trevor, what does that mean? Yeah. I mean, let me <laughs> tell, tell us a little clearer picture of what, you, what does that really mean? Where, where are you going with that? Yeah, yeah. So um, as, as marketers spend into media like Facebook or retargeting or search, we help them understand uh, the marginal impact spending a dollar into one of these tactics drives for the business. Okay. So these. Give, can you give us an example of a customer you've dealt with and how that relates to that, how you've helped that customer? Yeah, no, absolutely. So there's, there's, there's two sides of the business though, Don. There's the incrementality measurement and then there's cross-channel media reporting. So uh, customers engage us uh, to help them inform a cross-channel attribution decision to look holistically across their paid media mix. Uh, and when a marketer uh, puts media into market, they frequently will buy a pretty comprehensive mix. It could be Facebook, Pinterest, retargeting search, could be video on YouTube, could be direct mail. We help them look across that portfolio and understand what is really driving the, the business. Uh, the intelligence uh, is informed through experimentation. So the methodology is all anchored on innovative uh, experimental design and uh, customers reach out to us to help them uh, move from a metric that they're consuming through the platform. So Facebook and Google and Pinterest, uh, they're all presenting metrics in their platforms. And uh, a brand will engage us as an independent neutral party to help them understand what is the true contribution that this media is driving against their, their business goals um, through, through our lens. And our lens being an experimentation lens then applied to uh, cross-channel portfolio framework. So we, we, are, we are a finance tool for, for marketing and we provide a uh, portfolio management tool to inform investment decisions. So let me see if I understand yeah. this correctly, Trevor, if I, get the, if I get what you're saying correctly, is that you will, uh, companies will engage you as an independent third party to look at the metrics that Google, Facebook, uh, Pinterest and those others are saying to their client, hey, you're getting this many hits, you're getting this many views, and you'll go and look at that and say, well, yes, you are, but here's what it really means, or here's, what you're, here's how deep you're going with your, uh, with your message. Am I, do I have that partially correct or all correct? Yeah, you, you, you do. So all of the media platforms independently are, per, are reporting uh, performance metrics. Okay. And all of the platforms, they take 100% credit for every conversion that they are in the converting path of. We call them oh, last touch metrics. Right. So, so like Google when a, will say, that's all because you went to Google is why you're seeing you this it. customer. And you're saying, maybe, maybe some others. You got it. You, you got it. So there's a situation through the client lens of severe overcrediting. When they add up all the credit the platforms are trying to take credit for, they end up with far more uh, conversions or transactions being assigned to the platforms than the business is seeing. Ah. So we call it duplication. So yeah. we want to help unwind that and deduplicate that and assign credit where credit is due. And today, the best path to informing that uh, is really smart experimentation to inform what is the, the true contribution or lift that that media tactic is, is driving. Got it. I see. So how does your, first of all, uh, Trevor, how did you get into this business? I mean, how, what is your path that took you to, to be in the seat that you're in right now doing this? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, so I, I, I graduated with an engineering degree uh, from Santa Clara University. I spent the first six years of my career as a sales engineer selling test and measurement hardware and software in the telco space. I, I did an MBA at USC. Um, it tapped into my entrepreneurial uh, instincts. And I came out of the MBA. I joined a good friend uh, who had just raised some money uh, building out a digital at home network. So that was my introduction into advertising technology and media buying ecosystems. That was in 2005, 2006. It was my introduction to ad agencies. Now media was purchased. Uh, we worked together as a, a fun, young entrepreneurial hustling team. I left there in 2008 to join a, uh, a really a, a pro leadership team, a, a team I say of, of pro entrepreneurs 
from a company called Blue Martini Software. The name of this company was Seesaw Networks. Had a great founder named Monty Zwieben. Uh, and I uh, worked there for three years. I followed uh, a, a, a CRO at the time, a fantastic enterprise software leader, uh, to a company called Visual IQ. In 2011, I got to Visual IQ. Uh, Visual IQ is a small emerging uh, company building the, the pioneering technology of multi-touch attribution. So it was right in the early innings of, of this, this industry that I've been immersed in for the last uh, nine years. Um, the application uh, and the goal of the application is to form cr smarter cross-channel media attribution uh, decisions. That is where I met uh, my current co-founder, Madame Bardouage who was leading technology for us. He was the, the head of product, but leading technology. Uh, really brilliant technical thought leader in my industry. Uh, we worked very closely together as I was on the customer success and, and sales and BD side, and I was technology. And uh, we worked closely together for four years. Um, we circled back and decided to team up at the beginning of uh, 2017. Uh, to start measure taking a different approach to solving this cross-channel attribution problem, no longer anchored in user level multi-touch attribution, but now a methodology anchored in really smart experimentation to uh, solve for the same cross-channel attribution problem. Great, I see. So, so tell us a little bit about, um, you have you and your co-founder and then you have a team of virtual employees, is that correct? That are around the world, around the country? We do. We are a distributed team. We're in one of those categories where uh, there is a, a lot of blind spots. There's a very steep learning curve. And so we have hired uh, experts from our, our category, regardless of where they're located. We have a pod in New York. Uh, we have a, another executive on our team, uh, Nick Stoltz, who's our COO. He runs all customer success. He's in New York. We have CS and product in New York. We have engineering in Boston with Madon. We have some engineering in Toronto. I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, and then we have some engineering folks over in uh, India as well. So, so there's so, uh, yep. So Trevor, I might as well mention to the to the audience listening. It is uh, it's Tuesday, March twenty fourth, right now, and we are in the uh, the second week, I believe, of our uh, of our coronavirus uh, lockdown. Everyone working at home, working remotely, and uh, working under this uh, this situation. You obviously have been there before. I mean, you started your company as a virtual company. Did this affect you guys in any way or how has this uh, 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 crisis affected your company? So yeah, you're right. We, if, is it two weeks? It, feel, it feels like two months, right? We are in the eye of the storm of uh, COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, known as uh, coronavirus. Um, we, uh, we uh, operating as a distributed team, were set up for this home office uh, environment. Um, but it's absolutely impacted us, our customers, uh, the humans. I think, you know, everyone is having a, a difficult human experience right now. And, and uh, it's a scary time for our country and the health of our community and our loved ones and the economy. Um, we've got 26 clients today and, and brands that we work very closely with, retail, e-commerce, digitally native brands. And, you know, we have a front row seat uh, to the uh, the impact that uh, this is having on brands and retailers and, and, and the economy. So um, Trevor, tell us yeah. about that. What are you seeing from that front row that others may not be seeing? Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, I think we all know that retail has been uh, shutting down. And so we have brick and mortar retail stores over the last uh, week and now two weeks, uh, the retail dial is, is turned off. And uh, so at the beginning of last week, we saw both retail and e-com have a, a big setback. At the end of last week, we saw e-com start to, uh, to charge back. Um, but uh, the uh, conversion rates and uh, transactions, uh, the, the movement was quite substantial last week. Um, it is, it is, is moving day by day. So at the beginning of last week looked quite different than the end of last week. And there was reason to be more optimistic at the, at the end of the week. So are you, are you optimistic now? And if so, why, if not, why not? Or what's your take? I know it's impossible to tell the future, but, and here yeah. you, people will be listening to this in the future from when we're recording it. So, I mean, what is your take on where this is going to go and how is it going to impact your business and, and those customers at large? 
Yeah, I mean, there's no question we're certainly uh, going to get get through it. Um, what I'm mindful of right now is 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 that uh, this is a time that that defines us. Um, and there's a, a couple uh, a, a, a couple points there. Um, you know, it defines like what kind of leader I am and what kind of leadership team do do we have. I'm mindful that we need to lead with empathy. Um, calm the anxiety that is stimulated by all the news outlets and most of the narratives that, that we hear from others? Um, do we provide a, a sense of calm and stability to our employees you know, during the storm? That also translates to our clients. We are a partner to these 26 clients uh, who are extremely challenged today. And, and the challenge to my teams, we had an all hands over the weekend, was we want our clients to look back on this and say that uh, they don't know what they would have done without measured. Um, so this is an opportunity for us to be a, a, a stronger, um, valuable uh, partner to, to our clients. Um, I think it also defines us as individuals, as husband and, and father and, and friend and you know, and who we are in the community. And, and there's certainly everyone struggling, but but some have it worse than than others, right? Absolutely. Especially the elderly. Um, but it is a uh, it is a challenging time for everyone. But it I think it it brings our community together. Certainly bringing our our team together as we have a close knit team, um, and uh, you know we have great relationships with uh, with our clients. I think it's drawing us in yeah, to uh, to get through this storm together. That's a very good point, and and you brought up a very very good point, Trevor, in that you are. You're the leader of your organization and your customers are looking to you. Your workforce is looking to you. I imagine your vendors are looking to you also, but the decisions that you make and what you're making now for their health and safety today, more importantly, and then going forward, positioning yourself in the future. I mean, can you talk a little bit more about how do you, how do you calm people down during this time of uncertainty? What types of messages are you sending out to those stakeholders? Yeah, trying to be a voice of of security. There's so much unpredictability in all of this that that and that's really what makes it scary. So, trying to lead with empathy and emotional awareness and 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 put the humans first. And and that was one of the reasons that you know we spent a lot of time as a distributed team. One of the challenges we all can't get into a conference room, right? And so, um, pulling the team together on Zoom and providing transparency into where are we as a company. Um, exposing the company to our financially uh, financial stability as we are a financially stable company and as we see some inevitable churn in the business what does that mean and and uh, just trying to present some transparency and expose um, expose some confidence to 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 our customers and the stability of the company so is that different than and I'm hearing by the way I'm hearing that from a lot of leaders they're just being open hey guys we're gonna be here tomorrow we're gonna get through this together yeah. But is that different than the way you had been managing, say, two, three months ago? Or what's, is it different now? No, I, I, I think it's the, the, the tone has changed and the frequency has changed. And uh, just making sure everyone across the board um, understands with clarity the, the health of the company, what this means to our business, what this means to our customers. Um, they're very clear on the path forward for how we're engaging clients, how we as a team are emotionally aware to uh, the humans that are partners and, and our clients. Um, I think it's, 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 uh, it's more frequent um, and shining just a, a brighter light for them on uh, exactly what this means for us and, and our clients. Right, I see. And, and, and how, uh, getting back to your clients, you have some very uh, large clients, it sounds like, that are uh, in a lot of I mean, multi-million dollar organizations that are using you for their marketing purposes. Do you see, do you see this, this health crisis, you, you mentioned earlier, how it's affecting them and affecting their metrics is like that. And, and where do you want to be positioned when this is over as opposed to where you were a couple of months ago? Yeah, I think it goes back to we are a high value partner for our clients, providing source of truth, cross-channel media re reporting, uh, measurement to inform investment decisions. And, and, and right now, we need to be the roadmap to guide them uh, to identify waste and inefficiencies in their portfolio, making sure that you know, everywhere they can tighten the belt, removing waste, we are guiding them in that direction. And then as they need to uh, drive new customer acquisition in this environment, this environment is very different today than it was 
two weeks ago, what is the most effective way to acquire customers um, given the realities of, of two days? So we provide and, and seek to provide that, that roadmap for our clients. And like I mentioned earlier, we want to be that partner in, in you know, two, three, four months from now when this is all behind us that they look to us and say, I would not have been able to, or I don't know what I would have done uh, without you in the equation measure. Yeah, that's great. And I imagine that that goes for your employees also, doesn't it? I mean, that you want those employees to know that you're a leader they can trust, that you're a leader that can get us through these turbulent times. And at the other side of it, and in two, three, four months from now, they'll be looking back going, what a great company to work for. No question. Ab absolutely. So we've got 28 people in this company. Um, many of us have worked together for, for a long time. We've got a veteran team uh, that has been immersed in this category since the, the, the early year, years or early, early days of, of cross-channel attribution. So there's a lot of history here, even though we're distributed. We have folks in India and Toronto and New York, Boston, L.A., um, a lot of us have been together for a while, so there's all we're ready the, the the deep roots and kind of that, you know, the family ties, so to speak. But uh, no, I'm, I'm absolutely. That's great, Trevor. What what message or what advice would you want to pass on to other uh, guys like you who are running companies of uh, 25, 30 people, and they're in different industries and they're all trying to get through this thing together right now? What advice would you give them? from your experience that you've had these last two weeks? It's the last two weeks, but I think it's, you know, the last 20 years of my, my, my career, uh, the entrepreneurial journey is it's, it's a roller coaster, right? And, and the lesson for me, uh, looking back, going back to my enterprise sales days is you got to bring the highs down and, and, and the lows up. Right. You can't get too high when you're winning big and things are great and the winds at your back and things seem to be coming easy. And when 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 things seem to be really tough and the wind is in your face and it's one setback after another, uh, you can't let yourself get too low. You got to bring bring those lows up. Um, it, that was a, a lesson I learned in enterprise sales that has absolutely translated into building a company. Wow, that's um, great advice. That's great advice to hear because it's so true. I mean, we get we tend to celebrate and be so optimistic. As an, as entrepreneurs, we're naturally optimistic. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this and putting yes. everything at risk at doing this kind of thing. But you're right. We need to be tempered in the in the good times and optimistic, or as or as level headed in those in these tough times that we're in right now to get through those kinds of things. Yeah, that's right. And then perseverance wins, right? Perseverance I think it's. Wins. It's uh, every entrepreneur knows that um, if you really believe in what you're doing and any entrepreneur, if you don't fully believe and are, are incredibly passionate about what you're doing, you probably shouldn't be doing it. But perseverance is, is probably one of the top attributes and that uh, indicates success. That's a very so you good just point. have to persevere through the setbacks along the way. And this is a challenging time. We will all persevere through it. And uh, you just gotta, gotta, gotta be mindful of that. Mindful of that, and as I understand today, be mindful that cash is still king, and uh, right. we don't know where the where the future is going to be. So if you have uh, have some money, use it very carefully. But there could That's be right. some great opportunities, I would think, out there also for talent acquisition and other acquisitions, things that may come up for for someone like you that's thinking optimistically and looking looking forward to the future. Absolutely, we are we are absolutely mindful of of growth and and investment, and we're going to be very careful and prudent with our, our finances during this time. But it's it's only a matter of time before we pop out of this and we can get back to our high growth ways. So uh, we had an interview today, and we're continuing to interview um, new new talent and 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 prepare for uh, growth. It's uh, let's see when that comes, but it's uh, around the corner at some point. That's great. That's great, Trevor. Well, if anyone wanted to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do that? Um, you, can, uh, you can find our company at measured.com and you can reach out to me at trevor at measured.com. Great. And Trevor, before we wrap it up, is there anything that you would like to tell uh, your stakeholders or anyone that may be listening that we haven't covered already about measured, about how you solve problems, about how, what differentiate, differentiates you from the competition, anything you'd like to mention on the show uh, before we uh, wrap it up? Um, no, I, I, I think we, 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 uh, we covered some great topics. I, uh, I, I think one other point maybe I would make is that um, you know measured is, I'm very fortunate to have an incredible team that I work with here. Um, I've got uh, a, a fantastic leadership team uh, and an incredible team that executes for us. And, um, you know, one of, one of the, uh, the recruiting um, principles that I'm very mindful of as we look to talent is 
Uh, there's really the, you, you know, the Malcolm Gladwell outliers principles, the 10,000 hour rule, having deeply invested 10,000 hours of, of time and energy to build deep experience in our field. Um, it's it's uh, always top of mind for me as I'm, I'm looking for uh, new people to join our team. Um, the uh, obsession with the problem, it, it defines, defines our company. Uh, and then uh, having a proprietary gift that, that leads to an unfair advantage. I think that also defines our, our company. So we are looking for incredibly talented and passionate people to, uh, to join us. And uh, if, that's, if that's you, and, and, uh, please reach out to us. That's great, Trevor. Well, that's fantastic. And, and I think all of your employees would be proud to work for a leader like you who uh, seems to have their act together in good times and bad like this. So thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate your time during this time. And uh, we'll stay in touch. Thanks so much, John. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for listening to My Company Story. We have new episodes coming out every week, so please subscribe if you like this. And if you'd like to hear previous episodes, you can go to mycompanystory.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, if you or someone you know would be interested in coming on the show, please email me at don at Thanks for listening.